the evolution is is we've kind of become uh, one of the you know only one or two world class manufacturers of remote weapon stations in the world, and of course we're the largest defense exporter in Australia right now. Got about a 27 year history of producing remote weapon stations, and we got over 2,000 in service with seven defense forces worldwide and got about another 1,100 under contract for delivery over the next uh, five years. Um, EOS DS USA is a subsidiary of the Australian parent. Uh, I'm in uh, Huntsville, Alabama, and we were stood up about three years ago. We're in an 80,000 square foot facility and, uh, and loving the Huntsville area, but we're producing uh, R400s right now, and we're in pre-production for our uh, heavier weight RWS, uh, the R600s. The system is incredibly smart. All of our RWSs have uh, some capability in this area, but the R400 is particularly uh, well suited to mid-range uh, weapons. It's very rugged, it's very, very precise, and it's probably in the third generation of RWSs. Uh, if the first generation was merely being remote and the second was incorporating some stabilization, the third is where you begin to incorporate precision and a little bit of compound stabilization where you're stabilizing the site separately from the uh, from the weapon itself. Uh, and we're just now edging into what probably is going to be the fourth generation where you inject uh, a lot of, not a lot, but a little bit of AI capability. Um, anyway, the system knows the characteristics of the ammunition it's shooting. It knows the performance uh, parameters of the weapon that's mounted on it. It knows the characteristics of the vehicle it's on, how much it flexes under certain circumstances. It knows the position of the vehicle, the orientation. It understands the atmospheric condition. And down to the millisecond, it is compensating for all of those things. And it's doing it against a, uh, a target that's either stationary or moving from a platform that's either stationary or moving. And what that combination does is it will take a system that, uh, that the manufacturer says will be accurate out to 14 or 1500 meters, and it will hit targets very, very reliably uh, out at 2000 meters. And um, we routinely will partner with weapons makers, take their systems, put them on ours, do a little bit of work, optimize it, and the, uh, and the end result is it outperforms what they tell us it will do. Um, there have been a number of platforms in the past that carried multiple missiles, but in most cases what you got was four or six missiles kind of stapled onto a, a mount and the vehicle would go out essentially with only missiles. Uh, with a rise of nonlinear battlefield and the introduction of technologies like UAVs into the threat mix, the importance of deploying critical platforms with a robust ability to defend themselves is, you know, can't be understated. It's absolutely critical. And so we went into this mix assuming that this uh, R600 missile carrier had to be not only capable as a missile carrier, but it had to offer the ability to protect itself against a wide range of other threats, not just armored vehicles, but everything. Uh, and so we put the uh, XM914 30 by 113 cannon as an example, and a 7.62 coax machine gun, uh, along with the four Javelin missiles. And it gives you the platform that can go out on the battlefield and, and deal with almost any threat from UAVs to light and medium infantry and, and, and truly defend itself while it's moving rapidly to a critical point on the battlefield to provide this anti-armor overmatch. AUSA is a wonderful opportunity because, of course, a lot of the people that, that make decisions about critical capabilities will come through or they'll have members of their team there. 
So we're, of course, showing our light, our medium, and our heavy remote weapon stations. But we're trying to emphasize a couple of points about all of them. Um, as ground forces are beginning to uh, mature their capabilities uh, and are moving from area suppression weapons, the, the older style machine guns and medium weight uh, machine guns, heading more toward things like the 338 Norma Magnum or 6.8 millimeter machine gun. Both of those systems really are fairly revolutionary. They, uh, they have a greatly extended range. They're much, much more uh, lethal. They pack a huge punch. And uh, so the ability to point those very, very precisely, that's gonna be critical to leveraging the capability of the systems. But moreover, uh, we wanna highlight that the sensor unit uh, in these remote weapon stations is an absolutely critical uh, component of the whole. Not only do you spend only one or two percent of your time uh, in combat actually shooting, and the rest of your time you're using that sensor unit to understand the world around you. But moreover, um, legacy systems that we field in the past were, were designed to support these relatively short range, relatively area fire weapons. Uh, an uncooled thermal, you know, discerns blobs at maybe 1800 meters. You don't get good definition and identifying your, what you're shooting at with great uh, confidence is, you know, it, it's not capable of doing that kind of performance at long range. The world is changing. Armies are moving to these much more accurate weapons. And when you're in uh, coalition conflicts uh, where you're fighting as part of a group, you can rely on a lot of technical uh, capabilities to lessen the risk of fratricide, but the absolute best way to do it is to know what you're shooting at.